Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Jeff Pang from the Grow Your Own Food group. Today we're talking about growing your own food. So Jeff, can you tell us about the Grow Your Own Food gardening group? Yes, um, I initiated the Grow Your Own Food group uh, back in October of 2018. Um, my interest in gardening goes back through my family's uh, lifestyle. Uh, and um, uh, also I learned a lot through the urban garden uh, over the years on the second Saturdays, um, which they just started up uh, back in uh, July of this year after two and a half years of um, silence. And uh, gardening has been uh, <clears throat> a fallback for everyone who had to stay at home. And uh, it's, uh, I did not feel the effects of the pandemic. Um, I did not feel very, um, you know, isolated at all with my garden uh, surrounding me. So what is the second Saturdays at the Urban Garden Center? Okay. People who don't know. The second Saturdays is an event that they provide to the public and it's um, put on by the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. And uh, uh, they have these master gardeners um, that uh, volunteer and put on workshops. And, uh, but you know, with the virus, um, they, uh, you are required to sign up on Eventbrite. Uh, but if you Google like Oahu Urban Garden, you're able to find out what's available for the weekend. Um, it's not as free and easy as it was prior to the pandemic. Is there a cost now? Uh, I believe so. Um, it depends on the workshops that they have. Can you give us an example of what kind of workshops they've had in the past? Yeah, well, uh, they had, I believe, um, they had one on pollinators. Um, I thought it was in October, and um, but <clears throat> I haven't been in touch. In fact, I haven't been there for the past two uh, two years. Um, and uh, they've also had, um, you know, uh, uh, how to start a garden as well. Um, you know, and uh, they have a rose garden, uh, among other things. Uh, That's great. Um, so let's um, go back to the gardening group. And can you tell us what kind of people were at the gardening group when you had started it? Was it experienced gardeners, novices? What kind of people went to the meetings? And where oh, were the meetings? We had uh, a diverse, very diverse group. Some were very experienced and some were novice, uh, people who just wanted to learn. And that's what made it uh, special. It was the community, people in the area, uh, and it was in the evening, so you could you know, come after work. Uh, and um, we had uh, generally about 25 to 50 people attending. Uh, and I would always encourage people to bring their plants, cuttings, seeds, fruits, and vegetables to share with everyone who attended. And when people, you know, suppose people want to go again, is there somewhere that you're going to have these gardening meetings again? Are you planning on doing anything? Yes, I um, have to organize and align and coordinate um, you know the players because uh, I had a speaker and um, I, I I have to um, put together that rather than you know shooting from the hip but you know we've had some uh, members who stepped forward and talked about you know what they do at home and uh, that's uh, the great part of it because um, we always got together at the end to share our stories, you know, um, with each other. And uh, a great way to um, interact with 
the community. Yeah, I, can you give us an example of some of the people you had speak there? Because I remember some very nice meetings where people came and they made very useful lectures. Like there was one woman who talked about growing plants in pots for people who, you know, or containers, container gardening for people who don't, might not have a big yard. Another one who talked about dragon fruit and what other people did you have before the pandemic? Yeah, well, um, the container gardening was um, uh, uh, given by, uh, lecture was given by Amy Tevez. She's a longtime master gardener. Uh, and she is so knowledgeable. She grows everything in pots because she lives uh, in a um, HOA and a homeowner association where you cannot grow anything in your front yard uh, and even in your backyard from what I understand. Uh, and what you call, but it depends, you know, on um, where you live, um, what you can grow because, uh, and it will vary as to how successful you are. Some plants will grow in wet areas and, and, um, you know, and the temperatures might be too hot in, you know, like a, a place in, in uh, where I live in Kaimaki mm -hmm. for certain vegetables. And yeah, especially the summer. It's yeah. been so hot. So how yeah. about the other group that you also led before the pandemic, the plant-based interest group? Yes, uh, that was uh, essentially a plant-based potluck. Uh, and that was the outgrowth of uh, another group that was um, uh, from the vegan society um, called Imagine a Vegan World. But um, I preferred the plant-based lifestyle and um, it, it introduced people to eating healthier. And that was, you know, the thrust behind both of the groups is really to promote health in the community and um, growing your own food uh, was one way to do it because, you know, it's a way of sharing, um, you know, cause you always have more than you can use. And uh, what you call that, um, we, you could always um, meet others and exchange plants uh, on top of that. So, with the Whole Foods plant-based interest group, are there any plans to start that up again? And if so, where are we going to meet? It depends. Uh, I was conducting these uh, groups at Kilauea, Kilauea Rec Center. And um, that, uh, you know, the parks have opened up again, but... Uh, you know, I, I think there are still some reservations about, you know, serving food in, um, with each other. Yeah, so I mean, hopefully we will be able to meet again. It was, both the groups were a wonderful opportunity to get to know other people with similar interests. So I, I really had a good time and I got some cuttings that I'm still using. I'm trying to grow the dragon fruit right now, but <laughs> there's been no... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe this year, I don't know. <laughs> um, let's go on to talk about how you did the Master Gardener course for people who are very interested in gardening. Tell us what kind of time commitment that is for the Master Gardener course. And for people who don't know what is a Master Gardener, can you tell us what is a Master Gardener? Okay. The Master Gardener group is put on by the College of Tropical Agriculture again. And um, it's, uh, it runs from like the first week of February through May, uh, maybe the middle of May. Let's see, uh, but they are looking for um, students um, from October generally there, where they interview you and um, uh, uh, seeing if it's, um, you know, in selecting the class, there's usually about 20 to 25 individuals and uh, I attended the class of 2020, which was where, you know, we had the pandemic uh, at the time. So basically it was, um, you know, we met in person for uh, up until March and um, then it was on a Zoom link, which was kind of interesting because you also met with the people from the Outer Islands as well. 
And, uh, but you have these experts from the university talking about their specialties such as soils and organic gardening, as well as um, uh, ornamentals uh, and fruits and vegetables. Um, What's the time commitment for something like that? Well, the time commitment is uh, generally it runs um, on Fridays mornings from 9 to 11.30. And uh, if it was on Zoom, that can be done right in your home. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure what they are doing this year since they're opening up. Uh, they they um, sometimes meet at the you know, in Pearl City at the Urban Garden Center or in Wamanalo um, at the research station down there. Um, so it, it depends on, you know, uh, I guess there's a Tina Lau who is in charge of it now. Are there, when you had the COVID pandemic come in, did you have any hands-on during the course where you were able to go and or, or no, I mean, I don't know what it's like now, but I don't know if during your class because of the pandemic, you weren't able to have hands-on. Do they usually have hands-on classes? Yes, uh, they had hands-on up through February, um, but once the governor shut down the state, that was, the, and, and the university, they, they were very um, strict about that. Yeah. Is it an expensive course or what kind of cost are we looking at to enroll in such a thing? Uh, back when I took it, it was $250. Um, oh my gosh, it's a bargain. <laughs> yes, it, it <laughs> is. How many weeks is that? Every Friday uh, for three weeks. So, so you're talking about February, about, you know, um, four months uh, or, or less than four months. Yeah. That's great. And then what do you do after the course to become a master gardener? Okay. You have to um, uh, give uh, or volunteer 40 to 50 hours a year, you know, to some, uh, you know, organization to, um, you know, promote, you know, uh, gardening and learn uh, like some people are working at farms and um, or you can go to nonprofits. I I never kept track of my time. You know, I I'm a retired person and I thought, OK, I'm doing it because it's fun and um, I don't really care about the hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess so you would have to log your hours and then every year you would hand them in or how do they even keep track of that, that people are doing what yeah. they're supposed to be doing? They, they have it on computer, mm -hmm. you know, and basically I, I believe it's just an honor system. Yeah, because I do see a lot of master gardeners, like sometimes when I would go to the Urban Garden Center, when I was buying plants, Sometimes I would see them there just answering questions. So I guess that's the kind of thing that they would do. But I know that one of our common friends, she works at a farm. Uh, so I guess there's different options for people. And I guess that's why it's so inexpensive. They're hoping that people will give back to the community afterwards. That makes sense. So let's see some pictures from your garden, Jeff. <laughs> what are these? Those two things are sweet potatoes I grew a number of years ago, you know, in, in my garden, I dug down two to three feet deep just to loosen up the soil. And um, somehow, you know, those things came out of it. Uh, <laughs> How old were they? How long does it take to grow a sweet potato that big? That's my question. Well, generally they say four to six months. And I was surprised. Big? <laughs> there were no worms in there. I'm not sure how long I kept it in there. Like I, I, I tell you, told you previously, I don't keep track of um, the timing of things. Um, I just grew it just for fun. And I was surprised. I dug it out like nine o'clock at night one <laughs> evening. And I, I just kept digging and digging. And, <laughs> and it was the creamiest potato. 
I oh ever my ate. Gosh, I can imagine. I mean, I I remember I had these cuttings from my mother, and she told me they were sweet potato leaves but just ornamental and so I put them in the ground and they were just growing like weeds and then finally I was pulling them out and then I saw little tiny potatoes beneath them and maybe those that specific species doesn't grow as much below with the potato but more leaves but I mean it still was growing potatoes underneath so I was kind of surprised it's like oh my gosh oh, potatoes it's always a nice surprise right this is New Zealand spinach that grows wild in my backyard after a heavy rain. It just pops out um, because um, it's so hot over here. The seeds are all embedded in the earth. And um, <clears throat> apparently my soil, uh, you know, does well uh, with the spinach seeds. These are. Mexican oregano in the foreground. And I got that plant from Mr. Taroka from the cactus garden at KCC. Oh, wow. Uh, it grows and, wonderfully. You gave me some and it's growing very well. Oh, great. And in the background, uh, there's some rosemary and some green onions on the bottom of uh, the rosemary. And that I started with just a four inch spray and it's grown over the years. That's awesome. That um, I have uh, in the background, uh, that tree is a uh, ganduli bean uh, bush. And um, I use that to protect the, um, my garden from the sun that I have from the south. And below that are, um, lettuces that I've grown and some turnips, six inch turnips. Nice. In the soil. Those, are Those are Japanese cucumbers harvested. Those are big long ones too, I like that. Okay, and this is a picture of, of uh, an agroforestry workshop that I attended in the Waimanalo Research Center <clears throat> back in, December of 2018. And um, it was, um, you know, we planted an assortment of things. And people who are not familiar with that term agroforestry is where you develop um, a garden with uh, various heights of trees and uh, where you get low, medium, high, and extremely high trees. And then you plant. Um, other crops underneath to maximize the use of your space. And these are just some banana, apple banana trees I've grown over the years. And um, what you call, it's been flourishing, uh, but this summer heat is uh, taking a toll on some of the trees. Uh, and they don't do well in temperatures over like 85 degrees. You have to make sure they get enough water Otherwise, you know, I've had some fruit uh, just dry up on me a few years back. That's terrible. So tell us about how much water they need for one apple banana. <clears throat> I believe it really depends on your location and uh, your soil, of course, and the, the um, better structure uh, your soil has where, which, you know, can retain water where, you know, perhaps if you mulch it and <clears throat> you, put, you put compost into your soil, it'll enrich the soil, so it'll retain the water and, you know, uh, but you have to take a look at, you know, the soil itself and the trees itself to see how they're doing. And uh, like if I lived in Kaneohe I, or Deep in Manoa, I yeah, probably right. would not have to water. <laughs> that would be awesome. So tell us, how long does it take for a banana to get from my keiki to fruiting? Well, I read, um, um, it depends. Yeah, a real uh, little keiki that you can see like this big. Yeah. I, I, I've, um, I think it depends on the type of banana, uh, but it, it may take anywhere from 12 months to 18 months depending on the, you know, the 
the location as well, you know, and uh, certain uh, bananas will grow faster than others um, in the soil, the sun, and uh, the, the resources it has. And then how long does it take for the banana, once it starts fruiting, for you to be able to eat the bananas? Well, once a flower comes out, it takes anywhere from five to eight months, perhaps, from what I've read. Uh, and then if you cut the flower off, you told me that it will give more energy to the bananas. So once you cut the flowers off, how long can you wait before the bananas are ready? Do you wait, usually? It, it depends, I guess, on the variety. Um, you know, uh, I like I said, I I don't keep track of those things. Um, you know, uh, it's you know uh, busy work. <laughs> In my view, it's just busy work. You know, I I just want to um, just grow things and uh, what you call. Uh, Watch it every day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Those are regular chives that I have growing on the side of my yard. And um, they take um, quite a bit of water, I guess, uh, and not a lot of sun, I'd say. This is my compost pile I use. I generally don't use my green bin uh, and since everything goes in here. And you know, I chop it up with my machete and <laughs> move it from one side to the other. And, uh, How often? It, <laughs> How many it, times a day? Yeah. <laughs> when i feel like it so it's not you know um as often as i should <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a lot of hard work or do you keep track of the ratios well no uh, i just throw in, in uh whatever i have uh and i i rake leaves from across the street and even kcc sometimes <laughs> and somehow it all works out even though you don't keep track Yes. Wow, that's pretty good. I mean, I I thought about composting like that, but I think it's much easier to do a worm factory. So I always go for the worm factory. I mean, you know, eventually I think it does, but I th I guess it works faster and it's more heated if like the ratio is right, I suppose. But it's good that you're making use of all your waste. So I'm just wondering if people want to get in touch and join the Grow Your Own Food group or the plant based interest group, uh, plant-based lifestyle group, then how do they get in touch with you? Well, you sign up for the email list. They could email me at my address at jpang172 at gmail.com. And um, let me know that they would like to join uh, my group. Um, Right now I have 500 uh, names on my list that has been consolidated over the years. But of course, you know, like I said in, earlier, we, we have about 25 to 50 people who show up. Uh, <laughs> but like, I, you know, I have not initiated any uh, thoughts on the group yet, but um, you know, if they email me, they can get a head start. And uh, I, I plan to, uh, do something in the future. Well, that sounds great. Are there any other resources that you'd recommend for people, local resources, if they're interested in gardening, getting started oh, gardening? Of course, the first uh, place I would go to is the Oahu Urban Garden. And um, just to learn about, you know, what they're doing uh, currently and in the future. And um, those um, master gardeners are the ones I learned um what i know uh, today as, as well as you know um actually i used to consult with the uh university professors back you know 40 years ago and so i learned a lot from them but uh uh that's another thing if, if they have the time to speak with you um <clears throat> uh that's uh, another resource as well as um the gardens, uh, like uh, the foster gardens, some of the master gardeners go there and, you know, the botanical gardens, they have workshops on 
gardening, uh, and um, even um, the land arboretum, uh, uh, as well as I, I attended the Trees for Climate Key uh, workshop. And, you know, it, it's good to be involved with the community. I, I, I think that's what it's all about. And you, when you meet other people, good things happen. Yes. Um, well, we're out of time and we have to wrap it up. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. This is Healthy Planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Jeff Pang from the Grow Your Own Food Group. Thanks to Michael, our broadcast engineer, and the rest of the crew at Think Tech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you in two weeks for more of Healthy Planet on the Think Tech, the show for people who care about the health and the health of our planet. My special guest will be Narayan Raja from the Wild Bird Haven. Wild Bird Rehab Haven, excuse me. If you have ideas for the show or questions for my future guests, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at graceinhawaii.com or Instagram at gracefulliving365 for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.